Number 7. Alexander Lofgren and Emily Henkel In April of 2021, a couple went missing in California's Death Valley National Park at a time when temperatures in the region reached a maximum of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Alexandra Lofgren and Emily Henkel, aged 32 and 27 respectively, were both described as experienced campers. As an army veteran who'd served in Afghanistan, Lofgren was reported to have dealt with harsh environments in the past. The couple had failed to return from their camping trip for Easter dinner on Sunday and was reported missing on Tuesday, April the 6th. An extensive search operation was launched and their Subaru SUV was found the following day. Inside the vehicle, there was a note which read, two flat tires headed to Mormon Point of three days' worth of water. While making the arduous trek towards their destination, the couple encountered a 70-foot cliff and waterfall. As Lofgren looked for a way down, he lost his grip and fell from the rock formation, suffering fatal injuries. Henkel tried to reach him and had made some progress on the waterfall part of the way, but she too eventually plummeted, breaking her ankle. In the days that followed, she worked to survive in the remote area until both she and Lofgren were found by a rescue helicopter on April the 8th. Because of the rugged terrain, they could only be extracted the following day at about 11.30 a.m. Lofgren's body was taken to a coroner for further investigation, while Henkel, who survived, was transported to a hospital. Number 6. Owen Lewis A young Englishman died in the French Alps in early January of 2018 while trying to find his way to his holiday apartment at the Rissoul Ski Resort. 22-year-old Owen Lewis, originally from Coventry, was last seen drinking alone at the La Grotte du Yeti bar early on January the 2nd. He was waiting for a group to join him in Rissoul the following day. Lewis was reported missing by his friends and family after they couldn't reach him over the phone and social media. A search was launched and a few days later on January the 5th, a helicopter from the National Gendarmerie spotted a body in the snow near a mountain stream. Officers arriving on foot recognized the remains as Lewis from the missing person posters that had been placed at the Yeti and the man's identity was confirmed through his passport. The bar was only a few hundred yards from Lewis's accommodation, but he was believed to have taken a wrong turn after leaving the establishment. His disorientation, potentially alcohol-induced, had taken him only a few hundred yards from the Yeti, near a mountain stream. Footprints in the snow indicated he'd gotten lost before succumbing to hypothermia. Number 5. Albert Krishian in March of 2011, Canadian man Albert Christian and his wife Rita left their home in British Columbia and headed for a trade show in Las Vegas. Coming down from Oregon, they planned to make a stop on the Nevada border in the town of Jackpot and search for the quickest route on their GPS. The couple, both in their 50s, was captured on surveillance footage at an Oregon gas station on March the 19th. The navigational system then led them back to a road through a treacherous mountain region for which they were drastically unprepared. As they tried to power through the rough terrain, their Chevrolet van, which was over a decade old and had only front-wheel drive, got stuck in the mud. Three days elapsed with them fruitlessly trying to free the vehicle, and a decision was made that Albert would set out on foot to find help. He started walking through the muddy terrain, marking the last time that Rita ever saw him alive. Seven weeks passed with the Christian's friends and family presuming that they died but having no concrete indication of what had happened to them. Then, three hunters searching for game in the area stumbled upon the van which had colorful blankets draped from the windows to attract attention. Inside, they spotted Rita, alive but severely weakened. They alerted emergency services and a helicopter airlifted the woman to a hospital, where she received treatment and subsequently recovered. Over the course of seven weeks, she'd survived by eating boiled sweets, trail mix and drinking water from a stream. She was forced to ration her dwindling supplies, losing 20 to 30 pounds in the process. Search and rescue crews scoured the area in the aftermath but found no trace of Albert. His body was discovered roughly 18 months later and identified through the business cards found on his body. He was within six miles of Mountain City, but his GPS battery had likely failed and he began walking too far uphill in deep snow before eventually dying from exposure to the elements. An Elko County Sheriff's deputy described Albert as a courageous man for having made it as far as he did. Number 4. Spiridon Vinokurov In March of 2013, while traveling to visit relatives in the Saka Republic, Russia, a hunter got lost and nearly perished in the Siberian wilderness. 48-year-old Spiridon Vinokurov was heading to the village of Alekokuyel, located about 75 miles from his lodge, 
as he'd later tell a media outlet, Vinokurov was checking his traps along the way and had failed to notice the signs of an impending snowstorm. As the blizzard engulfed him, the hunter became disoriented, and then the petrol ran out in his snowmobile. He began trudging through the snow in Russia's most unforgiving terrain, hoping that he'd encounter another vehicle. At some point during his plight, a pair of wolves began stalking Vinokurov. The hungry predators kept their distance while the hunter was walking upright, but after four days, Vinokurov could only muster up enough strength to crawl. It was then that the wolves closed in on him. He would subsequently recount, they cut the distance sharply and were literally breathing down my neck. Bone tired and extremely cold, Vinokurov resigned himself to his fate and dropped face down in the snow, knowing he'd either freeze to death or be eaten alive by wolves. Fortunately, not long after, he was spotted by a rescue helicopter. The crew found Vinokurov barely conscious and badly frostbitten. He was airlifted to a hospital where he received urgent treatment, with doctors determining that he didn't require any amputation. Number 3. Cecil Knutson and Diana Bedwell In May of 2015, California couple Cecil Knutson and Diana Bedwell got lost in a desert area of San Diego County as they were heading to meet family in Palm Springs. 79-year-old Knutson and Bedwell, aged 68, were last seen leaving the Valley View Casino in Valley Center on May the 10th. They were expected to meet their son, Robert Acosta, for a Mother's Day dinner. They never got there, nor returned to their Orange County home. Acosta feared that they'd been kidnapped or that their car had rolled down a hill as, over the course of several days, multiple ground and aerial searches of the back country were carried out. It would eventually emerge that the couple had gotten lost after taking what they believed to be a shortcut. Realizing that they'd made a mistake, Knutson tried to back up their 2014 white Hyundai Sonata but struck a large rock. The vehicle got stuck on the rugged road near a Boy Scouts camp on the Los Coyotes Indian Reservation close to Warner Springs. The couple, both of whom were diabetics who required insulin treatment, were unable to move forward. They didn't have any supplies and using the car as shelter, survived by eating oranges and the banana pie that they'd intended to take to Acosta's home. After seven days, Knudsen passed away. Bedwell ate orange peels and drank rainwater over the days that followed. The woman was found alive and severely dehydrated two weeks after she and Knudsen had gotten lost. Bedwell, who attributed her survival to faith, had also lived through a gruesome family tragedy approximately five decades prior in 1965. Her teenage sister, Sylvia Likens, succumbed to extensive injuries and malnourishment after being subjected to spine-chilling torture at the hands of caregiver Gertrude Banishweski, her children, and their neighborhood friends. The incident is often described as the worst and most sadistic crime to have ever taken place in the state of Indiana. Today's topic was requested by Miss Tina Hamilton and Y2K Goose. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Leonard Barry Weller In 2021, a British pensioner was lost for three days in a Thai jungle while on his way to meet some friends. 72-year-old Leonard Barry Weller, originally from Hastings, was riding his motorbike towards the province of Concane in the country's northeast. He became disoriented after entering dense woodland while traveling on an unfamiliar route and with temperatures rising to roughly 95 degrees Fahrenheit, climbed a hill in an effort to find a path. Weller then couldn't trace his steps back to his motorbike before he was caught in a monsoon storm and forced to find shelter. He ate nothing for three days as he pressed onwards and tried to walk his way out of the jungle, which is known for dangerous fauna including bears and venomous snakes. Weller survived by drinking water from puddles while using a piece of grass as a straw. His wife, 49-year-old Tawi, alerted the authorities after not hearing from him and a search party was sent out. A local hunter eventually found Weller lying on a leaf bed with no shoes on. The expat was recorded emerging from the jungle unshaven with an open shirt and his legs covered in cuts. International news outlets shared a video of the emotional moment in which he was reunited with Tawi. Weller praised his rescuers and tearfully stated, I'm wonderfully happy. I've never been so happy in my life. Number 1. Adrian Knopps A Michigan hunter survived for a week in the Alaskan wilderness in the fall of 2013 as he was battered by storms with no shelter or warm clothing and only four granola bars for sustenance. The trouble began roughly three days into the hunting trip on which 51-year-old Adrian Knopps was accompanied by Garrett Hagen, aged 24. They'd sailed a 50-foot boat up the Chickamin River, moored up and went ashore in a small skiff. 
At some point, Hagen shot an 800-pound grizzly bear. The pair skinned it and placed the meat on the small watercraft. Nobbs remained behind while Hagen took it back to the larger vessel. The latter never returned and his body was found 11 days after they'd separated, roughly 30 miles away. It's believed that he drowned while trying to get to the boat. With the skiff gone and with most of his equipment on the main boat, Nobbs was stranded in dire circumstances. Swimming back to the vessel in the frigid waters would have resulted in him freezing to death. Additionally, no one would be looking for him since the trip was meant to last for seven more days. Nobbs moved to higher ground. As the days passed, he didn't lie down on the sodden earth and instead tied himself to tree roots, which also enabled him to withstand constant rain and stormy conditions. Inclement weather wasn't the only threat, as he was also in an area known for the presence of bears and wolves. He rationed the granola bars, eating just one per day and estimated to have only got a few hours of sleep throughout his ordeal. At one point, believing he was going to die, the hunter carved a message into the butt of his rifle which read, A. Nops. Stuck on river tidal flat for five days. Cold, wet, no food. Garrett Hagen, Craig, AK died, taking Big Bear to boat 91513. The boat in which he'd arrived eventually broke its mooring and floated away, but was subsequently spotted by a Coast Guard helicopter. Rescuers found Nobs on the brink of death with swollen joints and fingers. He survived but suffered nerve damage that rendered him unable to walk long distances without resting. Thanks for watching. Would you rather try to find your way out of a remote area of the Alaskan wilderness or out of an area of the Amazon known for the presence of uncontacted tribes? Let us know in the comments section below.